A new study finds that late stage cervical cancer cases are on the rise in the United States. Joining us now is Dr. Daniel Ben Ruby from UF Health Jacksonville. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Would you explain why the increase? So we see in that study that UCLA released that there's two things going on. We see that women are less likely in certain segments of the population to get their pap smears and their cervical cancer screening tests. And we're also seeing that there's decreased re rates of HPV vaccination uh, in certain segments of the United States population. So let's start first with the annual screening. Is there a reason? Is this because of COVID? But these, these statistics really predate COVID. That's correct. So the study that was released was over 18 years. So we can't blame COVID for that one, although it seems like these days we're blaming COVID for everything. Um, so we're not exactly sure why, but there were some interesting things from the study. Um, Southern white women between the ages of 40 to 44 were actually the segment of the population where late stage cervical cancer was on the rise the highest. Mm. And also white women were twice as likely to miss their pap smears as black women in the study. And for reasons we're not entirely certain because this was population level data. Uh, so uh, given that, what is the prognosis for late stage cervical cancer? It's severe, is it not? It's extremely poor prognosis, and that's why we want to get the word out about cervical cancer screening. The five-year survival rate for stage four cervical cancer is only 17%. Mm. The overwhelming majority of women with late stage cervical cancer uh, die from this disease. So that's why education is so important. Are there any warning signs that a woman might be aware of that she needs to go for certain? There are, but they can be hard to detect. A lot of times it's heavier menstrual bleeding, especially bleeding after intercourse, uh, and sometimes pelvic pain or vaginal discharge. And those are things that don't necessarily obviously scream cervical cancer. So that's why it's so important for women to see their doctor regularly and to get their pap smear, and also when they're younger, um, to get their HPV vaccination. It's interesting because it, it's, it's hard to talk about, I think, maybe for some women, right? And to make that call to the doctor. So is this an issue of maybe women who are just too busy or women who've just never gone to begin with regularly? What we do see for late stage cervical cancer is that a lot of these women have not seen a physician in many, many years, sometimes decades. Uh, and those are the women that are at highest risk because they're not getting their screening. And we see that in, in our population that we treat both at UF Health and also a Across the country. Could this be associated with an insurance issue and not having any then? At times we found in the past that women who have had trouble accessing care because of insurance issues, they don't get the required screening. Um, the health department tries to help out with some of this effort, but there's no replacement for seeing your doctor or seeing your healthcare provider and having access to care with good funding. Now from I want insurance. to move to the HPV vaccine. There is a vaccine for this. It is offered to children. I believe my daughter had her first at 11 to, to, to young girls, obviously at 11 years old. Why do you think that there is such a hesitancy for parents to allow their daughters to get this vaccine? You know, it's something that's been discussed a lot. Because the HPV is a sexually transmitted disease, we think there may be some apprehension from certain parents about, well, this is something that's sexually transmitted, maybe we don't need to worry about it yet. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, it's a cancer prevention vaccine, and it, and it works for preventing illness in both uh, boys and girls, because boys can actually see rates of, of cancers go up with HPV as well. So really, if you think about it as cancer prevention, there really shouldn't be a stigma around it. Are there any side effects to the vaccine that you're aware of? No major side effects. And also it's important to note the vaccine's been out since 2006. We've had many years to collect data on it and they've universally been proven to be safe and effective. And I want to point out, I mean, though I'm sure it's rare for younger people to develop late stage cervical cancer, the reality is, is should this happen to a younger woman, I mean, they wouldn't be able to have children as an example as they got older, right? That, that's correct. This oftentimes requires either a hysterectomy or radiation and chemotherapy that often renders a woman infertile. So best way for prevention, your message then to the public watching this morning? Uh, get vaccinated, and if you can't get vaccinated, or even if you do, get your pap smear and see your doctor. Doctor, thank you for your time this morning. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.